hot plasma and cold plasma. We already touched this topic in other videos because it, we do require a certain high energy to and you get a skin rejuvenation. This is exactly what we do to that arc, it's much lower. Therefore, the, the, here at this point, at the... Um, In this video, we're going to talk about uh, hot plasma and cold plasma. We already touched this topic in other videos. However, we wanted to make another one uh, touching this topic so you have a better understanding of this particular difference and the possible applications you can actually do with it both. So first of all, we're going to talk about the hot plasma. Well, hot plasma is what we've got in most devices up until today, 2018. So what they actually do, they utilize air um, in order to generate the plasma. So as I say, we've got the classic electrode, which you find in uh, most devices. And then you use, there's no external gases, it's just air, and then you have the skin. Now, the problem with air is that the dielectric strength is very, very high, and the coefficient, obviously, because it's air, everything is related to air is one. And the, electric the dielectric coefficient being quite, quite high, quite strong, air is not normally an um, insulator. Being an insulator is quite difficult to actually convert an insulator to a conductor, which is what we actually do when we're actually making plasma or electrical arcing. So, but it's possible, of course, and it's, as it has been done for many years now, in many different applications in many different sectors, uh, not only the aesthetics, but also manufacturing and so on. So the way it's normally done in aesthetics is by using the tip effect, by using an electrode that is pointy, pointy because we require the tip effect in order to initiate this arc more easily. And given the fact that the electric strength is quite high and the air is, not, is normally an insulator, we do require a certain high frequency and a relatively high voltage and a very short distance between the skin and the tip of the electrode. And therefore, given that the voltage is relatively high and the frequency is relatively high, the energy associated to the arc is relatively high as well because it, we do require a certain high energy to convert something that is an insulator normally into a conductor. And for this reason, for this high energy, normally the temperature that we've got at the surface of contact between the arc and the skin is quite high. So being high, very high, obviously it kills um, all sorts of germs at the uh, micro, uh, well, bacteria, viruses, where, when is, a, where is applied, but that's another, another thing. But what happens is that it's a painful treatment, so there's a high temperature, make, makes a painful treatment because the amount of heat dissipated into the skin is inevitable and is relatively high. So much so that with any devices that use hot plasma, plasma in air, or electrical arc, and, uh, whatever you'd like to call it, is so high that it causes swelling after the treatment. So you're going to get a certain degree of swelling to one to two days after. The redness normally uh, occurs almost immediately after the treatment anyway. So if you apply a spot in there using hot plasma, plasma in air, or electrical arc in air, then this area at the sides, uh, all around this area becomes a bit red almost quite immediately and then it gets a bit swollen. And then when you do these treatments on the upper eyelids, then the eyelids can become swollen as well. Actually, they do get uh, swollen m almost in any treatment unless you use certain technique techniques. But it's, uh, it's something that is a matter of fact. So you get a good amount of heat dissipated into the uh, the dermis um, and 
which makes it painful. Therefore, you have to use anaesthetics, which are not normally, as you know, topical anaesthetics. And the, um, this, if you look at from, from above, this dot here has got a relatively, relative to the, the, the plasma in, in argon, relatively small diameter and relative deep ablation, again, relative to the, the cold plasma. Again, we're going to talk about cold plasma later on. So it's a deeper, deeper ablation. And that makes this sort of um, treatment, this, this sort of technique, quite difficult and quite impractical compared to cold plasma and other devices like lasers and so on to carry out a skin resurfacing. Because every time you, you apply a plasma there, you've got a relative um, deep ablation. And if you just try to cover the whole area because you've got a very small uh, diameter, you've got loads of heat that's propagated all throughout the skin. It's really something you shouldn't actually do in terms of, um, you shouldn't actually remove the whole um, epidermis by using this technique because you're going to very likely are causing some, some problems, some major, major problems later on. So this is why skin resurfacing, the way we know it is to say, eliminating the, uh, the epidermal layer all throughout the face, for instance, is not done by using hot plasma. It's done by applying spots actually using the hot plasma is done by applying different spots at a certain distance so that the heat is actually, it's almost more the heat than the, the elimination of the skin that does the skin surfacing using hot plasma because then given the heat that you actually propagate in, inside the skin in, in spots as we've seen in the spot uh, operation then you've got the, um, the fibroblast stimulation and then you've got the skin regeneration later on. But if you want to do it in the, in the classic way, which is done by removing the, uh, um, the epidermis, this is a bit difficult. And this is why we have introduced the cold plasma. The cold plasma is, um, is nothing particularly um, new. Something that's been used for many years in aesthetics as well. And it's the, the use of the same physics that we've got here with the electrode. But using external gases. And the, the gas that's been used for many years is argon. Argon has been used because it's got a dielectric coefficient which is quite low, 0 0.2. And what that means is that it's quite easy to convert argon into, from a, um, a, an insulator to a conductor. And this is quite important. Um, so that is quite easy. Also the other benefit about argon is that it's relatively uh, inexpensive to get and is an in inert gas. What, what, that, what it means is that it's not flammable, it's, it's not uh, poisonous, um, therefore you can actually put it in, 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 in a room, it doesn't kill people. Uh, is not poisoning people, is not causing uh, explo hazards of explosions or anything. So it cannot explode, it cannot cause um, any, any harm, harm to the individual. This is why it's been widely used for this application. But mind you, what I'm saying about aesthetics has also been applied in other industries for several years using argon and uh, normal hot plasma. So it's nothing new. Um, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, it's been still used in aesthetics. What we have seen is that this particular application on its own is quite expensive in aesthetics, so we give you the option to use argon if you wish. So you buy your own argon and you add it to the device and then you can actually do it. So what is the, ad the advantage of using argon or cold plasma? And why is it called cold plasma? So as I say, argon has is, is got a low the electric coefficient, so it makes it much easier. It is much easier. You do require a lot less energy to convert that argon from an insulator into a conductor. So that ionization of the of the of the gas, or which is called plasma, is much easier to take place. So you require normally less voltage, uh, lower frequency, and so on, less energy in order to to cause it. And also the distance 
between the tip of the electrode, if, if, we, if we imagine this is argon flowing through, um, and we've got the electrode here, um, that distance is much larger. And also what we've got is that we've got at this point a larger diameter. If we look at this spot from above, we, look, we see that this spot here has got a larger diameter that we would get in there. And also, given that the distance is much easier to generate the arc, so also is, and that diameter is quite larger, it's actually quite easy. It's much easier than this case to actually go through the skin and remove um, the epidermis, which is what is done in skin resurfacing. Given that the energy, in order to generate that plasma here, is much lower, what happens is that um, the energy associated to that arc is much lower. Therefore, the, the, here at this point, at the, um, the contact of plasma of the arc with the skin, the uh, temperature is much lower. Therefore, the heat is dissipated is much lower and the ablation is much uh, shallower. And therefore, is a, is a much better treatment uh, for the traditional skin resurfacing. And there's a lot less pain because, again, given that the heat dissipation, the temperature is lower, the heat dissipation is lower, there is less pain uh, associated to this treatment than you would get with um, the traditional hot plasma. I mean, when, I, when we've tried it, when we've actually done the, uh, our experiments and research, I've tried it myself when I've actually uh, get plasma, that cold plasma in my skin, no pain whatsoever. So it's a, it's a very, very good treatment. And also another thing that you get, which is actually an advantage of cold plasma skin resurfacing, when we define in this video, skin resurfacing is this type of treatment where you actually take, I mean, you take off the epidermal layer in order to get the skin regeneration and the skin rejuvenation you also get a certain amount of heat dissipated inside the skin. And this is quite key because in many other treatments, um, you actually only take off the epidermal layer and there's no heat dissipated into the skin. When there's heat dissipated into the skin, into the dermal layer, then you get a fibroblast stimulation and you get a skin rejuvenation. This is exactly what we do in hot plasma skin resurfacing, skin tightening. As to say, we apply the spots, and we can only apply spots that way because the temperature is too high, so it's, it's a hazardous to actually do the same thing using hot plasma and skin resurfacing. So what you do, you just apply loads of heat. You don't actually take off the, the epidermis as such. You actually only apply spots, so the epidermis taken off is only a spot. And then you rely on the heat propagated inside the skin which is, as we know, get lots of swelling after that. It's that heat that causes the fibroblast regeneration and skin rejuvenation and skin tightening. Whereas in this case, you do get that, but in a le you do get a certain amount of heat, but less, and you rely also on the fact that you take off the epidermis, so then you have the skin regeneration, because once you take off the, the epidermis, the skin needs to regenerate that layer, and you get the skin rejuvenation in these two ways getting a bit of fibroblast stimulation and also the skin regeneration. You've got a less pain, pain, painful treatment and it's much easier to carry out. So what we're going to do is just a recap. So again, in the new device, we have given you the um, possibility, the option to for you to get the argon and add it onto the, um, the, um, your treatment. And you can also, as you know from the other videos and the other material we've got online, you can also change the voltage at the tip of the electrode and you can change the frequency as well. So you've got these parameters. You can change many parameters um, with a new device. So you get that. So what is the difference between hot plasma and cold plasma? Once again, we don't want to use jargon. This is not the way we operate. We want to explain. Without going into formulas, is normally air is a um, is not a conductor, is an insulator, and you do require to get a high 
um, to use high energy in order to convert that air from an insulator into a conductor. And this is one of the reasons why um, the surface, the, the contact area between the arcing and the skin is kind is has got a high energy, a high temperature, and it's got a lot of heat, which causes pain during the treatment, and therefore you have to use um, anesthetics in this type of treatments. And then you still do your sort of skin resurfacing, resurfacing which we more we call we tend to call this uh, this sort of skin resurfacing we tend to call uh, skin tightening um, because it's due to the the heat, and you don't actually take you do not take off all of the epidermis using this technique because it'd be uh, it'd be too difficult and too hazardous because again of that degree of ablation you get here, which is quite deep, and also the amount of heat that you get. If you, because normally, as you know, what we use in hot plasma is, uh, or plasma in air, or electrical acting in air, is just place spots at a certain distance which, with each other. We don't actually split spots one next to the other. And this is, again, because you get a lot of heat and you get a certain amount of ablation, so it's more hazardous to actually put this the spots one um, one uh, next to each other. Whereas, because of the very fact that the temperature here is much lower, then you can actually go and swipe the area and take off the epidermis much more easily. So you can actually make a swipe motion, with, whereas it'd be absolutely a nightmare to do and quite hazardous to do. So here you're able to swipe the area using a spray operation. Doing a spray operation on the skin to do the, the skin resurfacing using hot plasma is something that nobody does and shouldn't be done uh, because it's, it's kind of uh, difficult. It's been done on my eyelids but under control. <laughs> it is still possible but it's something that is, is more difficult to do and in certain ways can be hazardous. So this is the best way to, to do a skin resurfacing in the classical point of view because say for example Going off the tangent, if you actually looked at one of my skin tightening, uh, eyelid tightening treatments, it was actually done some swiping motion, but the, the power level was very low and still we had a very good results, still had a swelling after that, but it's not a technique that is actually easy to, um, to teach and easy to apply and as reliable as the spot technique. So, but if you want to actually do a classic skin resurfacing where you take off the epidermis um, and then you get uh, you you inject a certain amount of heat then cold plasma is your uh, your one of the best options and you can do it with a new device but just by argon and adding it onto the the device and that causes that um, tiny ablation of the uh, of the epidermis and then you can swipe the uh, the electrodes and do the, the whole treatment and you have the added advantage of some heat get into the skin and it's not as painful as a treatment as that uh, hot plasma. So hot plasma is something that we you find easily into the market. Um, pretty much all the most expensive devices they use the air as a carrier gas and then with a new device you can actually use external carrier gases as well. So. This is all for this, um, this video. Should you have any question, please get in touch with us. Thank you very much for watching.